start. So today we have uh, Nicolas Rola, he's uh, uh, from ICTV in Sao Paulo, who will tell us about the uh, Sims, going to Sims, going back to Sao Paulo. Thank you. Yeah, so I will tell you, tell you about these two works that have done, in, well, one has done in collaboration with Roger Rosenfeld from ICTP San Paulo, and with Camilo Garcia, Tomambi, and Brian Saldivar from Brussels, and also with Yong Shu from the ICTP Trieste. So it's in connection with these SIMPs, and I want to tell you, try to convince you how, why SIMPs naturally point towards SIMPs. And I mean then, theme, the first theme means self-interacting dark matter. Why naturally favors not WIMP, but these themes, these themes standing for, for strongly interacting massive particles. I will give more details about these two terms in, in a couple of, well, in a few minutes. Um, so in particular, I will talk about this in, so these two articles, one is in the context of um, Scalar dark matter, uh, uh, protected by a Z3, not by a usual Z2. So this uh, Z3 uh, comes from a spontaneous breaking of a U1. And this second paper is about uh, vector dark matter in this context of hidden vector dark matter. So, but this statement is valid, it's a very general statement. I will talk more precisely in the, in the framework of this second work of uh, uh, vector dark matter, the hidden vector dark matter. So it will be more about self-interactions in this hidden vector dark matter when this dark matter is, is made of seams, right? So just a very first slide about uh, uh, dark matter, the evidence of dark matter. We know that there are several observations that indicate of this non-luminous dark matter, so it actually it's a missing force, some missing gravitational force, at very different scales. So basically at small scales, uh, scales of, of uh, galaxies, so with the flat behavior of the rotation of galaxies. But also we have this kind of behavior at the level of clusters of galaxies and even at bigger um, uh, scales, for example, with the CMB and isotropies that can be very well explained in the context of this lambda CDM model. Okay, so this first is just the slide I showed you before. So this CDM, so called collisionless dark matter model, has been very remarkably successful in, uh, in explaining this cosmic structure over an enormous span of redshifts. However, it has faced persistent challenges from observation that prove the innermost region of the dark matter halos and the properties <coughs> of the Milky Way's dwarf galaxy satellites. For example, there are these two uh, known problems. For example, the core cost versus core, they're too big to fail. So this first problem is basically that when you do this n-body simulation, typically n dark matter only n-body simulations, they predict uh, profiles that, that have uh, this, this cost. Uh, in the, in, the, in the innermost region, for example, the uh, NFW, Navarro, Franklin, White, or the Inasto. The, in, the, in the center, they tend to be like one, one over R or something like this. However, so you have a big cusp. However, not all the observations point toward this cusp, but some points toward more core profiles. So like a, a profile more like, uh, uh, like, like flat in the, in the center, right? That's on the one hand. On the second hand, we have this too big to fail problem which is basically that embodied simulations predict very massive uh, Milky Way uh, satellites, so if you want very, very massive clumps, but however, that's not observed in, the, in, our, in, our, in our galaxy. So one option is to, ha to we, we have to understand why these very massive halos are not formed, or the other option is why these very massive uh, clumps um, don't manage to accrete baryons. So why these two big, with big halos, these, big, these clumps are too big to fail, meaning that they're too big to fail, uh, to fail uh, accreting variance, right? So that's another problem that, that's in the, the very small, in small scales, right? So the possible solution is, of course, uh, using baryon physics. So maybe that the end body simulation are not working properly, because basically because most of them are, are dark matter uh, only. And maybe they're, they don't, they fail to reproduce the real universe made of dark matter and, and variants. Or also maybe it's just basically we are, because we're not uh, able to model correctly all the, all the variants, basically, so all the astrophysical observations. So that's pure baryonic physics, but we are trying to solve this problem using uh, dark matter. 
And one option is to go from the collisionless, the standard uh, paradigm of collisionless dark matter to have some dark matter self-interactions, right? And when I mean self-interaction, I just mean this elastic scattering, so two to two process where you have both in the initial final state only dark matter particles. So these cold dark matter part, uh, problems are solved if dark matter is self-interacting, right? So dark matter particles in halo just elastic scatter with other dark matter particles. And we can solve these problems in, two, in, in, in this way. So for example, for the cost uh, versus core problem, the point is that particles get scattered off to the very dense halo centers. So we're going from a scenario like this in the no, when the, we have no uh, with dark matter is uh, collisionless from a profile like this with a core like in the case when, when we introduce this self-interaction for dark matter. That's for the cost versus core. In the too big to fail, what we have is that the rotation curves are reduced just because we are scattering out of the dark matter particles. We are basically reducing the, the mass of these, of these halos, of these clumps, if you want. And in that way, we can, uh, we can uh, match the simulated satellites or the stimulated clumps, if you want, with the observations. So yes, my point is that within this self-interaction, it's possible to solve this couple of, of problems of small, small structures. And now, what has to be the strength of these self-interactions? So in order to solve this problem, we have to have self-interactions, or if we want to see this sigma over m, where this sigma is just the elastic scattering cross-section over the dark mass, dark matter mass, of the order of few se square centimeters per gram. So if you want few barns per, per GV, which is something that is very, very difficult to achieve using uh, standard WIMPs, basically because we expect this cross-section to be of order picobar, femtobar, something like this. So there's like 10 order of magnitude or more mismatch. There are some constraints on these, uh, these self-interactions, basically coming from the bullet cluster, because you don't see um, 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 an, an offset between the, the, the region where the dark matter is supposed to be and where the stars are. So you don't see this offset, so you, there are some constraints. This, this cross-section cannot be too big. So this bullet cluster gives this constraint of the order of, say, this, this cross-section of mass has to be order smaller than, say, one or something like this square centimeter per, per gram. Now the model. I will talk about this hidden vector dark matter that has been proposed in 2008 by Tomambi. So the model is very simple. What we want to have is just a gauge SU2. So we want to have the uh, vector dark matter and a scalar doublet, phi. It's doublet under the SU2 and this, uh, but singlet under the, on the standard model fields. So we have this term, just the, the field a kinetic term for the, for the gauge coupling, plus this Lagrangian, which is basically the uh, kinetic plus the potential of the, of the phi. Right? We want this, the phi, to take a VF just as the, as, as the Higgs. It will be exactly a copy of, of the Higgs, right? this doublet. And at the, at the end of the day, after the symmetry breaking, we'll have, of course, a mass term for these A's, for these three A's, because it's a SU2, we have three three gauge bosons, uh, couplings between two dark matter and the rho, and two dark matter and, the, and, the, and one rho, and the quartic coupling, the typical coupling is exactly as, as in, the, in the standard model case. Right, so the spectrum will contain three degenerate massive gauge bosons. It's important they are will be degenerate, and one real scalar, so a, a copy of the Higgs, if you want. This, after the symmetry breaking, we break the SU2, we'll have a, a rim, um, a custodial SO3, basically for free, under which the dark matter will behave like triplets, or with triplets, and this row, so if you want the, the, the second Higgs, it will be a singlet. So will be, uh, uh, this uh, custodial SO3 will guarantee that the three dark matter uh, candidates are completely stable, and for instance, this annihilation of the, of the, the dark matter into a couple of, of rows it will be forbidden. After all, a vector cannot decay into, into, two, into two scalars. Right, so that's just for the, for the dark sector. After all, we, for now, we have no connection whatsoever with the standard model. But we want to have a portal, so it will be a Higgs portal. So the portal Lagrange will be basically the standard model, plus the hidden sector, which is the, the, the Lagrange I just showed you, plus a Higgs portal. The Higgs portal is just this. So a couple of five coupling uh, with a couple of, 
of Higgses. So this, of course, will generate a mixing between the Higgs and, and the rho, so it's the, the new second Higgs. And this will not spoil the stability of dark matter. And then we have four free parameters, basically the mass of the dark matter, the mass of the rho, so the second Higgs, theta, which is basically lambda, which is basically the portal, the connection between these two sectors, the dark, the, the dark sector and the visible sector, and g, which is basically the gauge coupling, right? So what we have is this uh, uh, important thing is that the stability here of the dark matter is not due to, a, to a, say, a parity put it by hand, like the R parity or a Z2 put by hand, but it appears for free just because of the gauge structure of the dark matter, right? So that for the mole. Now, what about the, the self-interaction? After all, what we want to have is to explain these self-interactions. So what we have to do, basically, is to, to compute all these kinds of diagrams, where A is just the dark matter, eta, well, I, sorry, I call rho. No, eta is exactly the same rho, so the second Higgs, if you want, and the Higgs, so we'll have this um, contact interaction, S, S, and T channels uh, with, uh, with A, so with dark matter, and we have again, also S and T channel mediated by the scalar, so the Higgs and, and the rho or the, the eta that I call, I call here. So in the case where the mediator is heavy, and when I told medi mediator, I'm, I'm thinking about the scalar mediator. When this guy is heavy, we just can, can compute this cross section just like, like brute force by like donkeys. We can comp and this cross section is something like this. The scale, of course, of the couplings is alpha just g square, so alpha square over the mass square, and I'm taking the, this coupling to be very small. And this coupling, so the Higgs portal has to be very small just because the Higgs will tend to decay very, f very pr uh, fast into dark matter. And we don't want to have that because they are constrained on the invisible branching ratio of the Higgs. So if, you, if we want to, to respect uh, the, the Higgs, um, uh, the observation of the Higgs sector, we have to have a small coupling, so a small coupling between the two sectors. So this, we have, to, we have no choice. This has to be very, very small, say of the order of 10 to the minus 5. And then we want this to match what we want, so se say a few one or something like this, square centimeters per gram, we have to have light dark matter and a sizable coupling, sizable gauge coupling. Um, like this is. So what we have is we have basically four free parameters, the mass of the dark matter, Ma, the mass of the mediator, theta, Oopa. <laughs> there's a hole in the pocket. <laughs> theta and the alpha. Alpha is basically the gauge coupling. So what we have is this has to be order one. This has to be, say, hundreds or dozens of MEVs. We want, we want to assume this to be heavier than MA. And this has to be small, small, say, 10 to the minus 5. And this is just because we want to have this self-interaction. So till, till here, we have no, no choice whatsoever. So another op op option is to have light mediators and light scalar mediators, so light eta, so light rows. Um, this case is a bit tricky because we're falling into a non-perturbative case, so we can have this kind of diagram, so the T channel change of, uh, of this light guy, and then we have to do the resummation because we, after all, it's like exactly like the summer for enhancement. We can have an exchange of one, but also two, three, I mean, we have this letter of, 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 uh, of eta that are, um, the, the, uh, our, uh, exchange. And so this analysis for the self-interactions has been done in 2013, and it's basically a solved problem. So if, the, if this guy is very light, so if eta is very light, what you have to do is basically solve the Schrodinger equation. It's a pure quantum mechanical problem with a, uh, an attractive Yukawa potential the, determined by the, by the interactions. So we have, say, something like a summer for in hand will give, give us uh, like a non-perturbative behavior for this, this cross section. I, I, I want, don't want to, to, I want to focus on the previous case, so when, when we have a heavy mediator, but I just show you this just for the sake of 
uh, completeness. So what, what we have in this case is, uh, so we have this kind of oscillation with by basically the exchange of semi-bound states, right? Exactly as in the case of the Sommerfeld enhancement. So in this case, we need the dark matter mass and the couplings to be at the electroweak scale. So in this case, where the mediator is light, we'll have basically a dark matter which behaves exactly as, as, as a WIMP. But I mean, this is not the case of interesting in, in this talk. So again, in this case, when the mediator is light, we'll have like a WIMP. So we, don't know, we know exactly how to, how to deal with, with this case for the production of the, of the relic abundance. So dark matter in this case, as I told you, is just a WIMP with mass and couplings at the electroweak scale. So the dark matter, so V, no, no I'm calling it V, sorry, uh, just can annihilate into gauge boson, into fermions via a, a Higgs exchange, so exactly the Higgs portal, uh, but also into scalars, right? Either Higgs or the or this second Higgs, exactly as the, the WIMP for self annihilations. However, there's another process that is interesting here, but again, I will not say much more about this. So it corresponds to semi annihilations. Because after all, this, the dark matter, this gauge boson has uh, the, um, the non-abelian um, nature of this, of A, so of the dark matter, provides this kind of triple couplings here. So we can have also not self, but semi-annihilations, meaning that a couple of dark matter can semi-annihilate this time into one dark matter particles and one scalar. This scalar could be either the Higgs or or the second Higgs, the, the, the row that I'm calling here, eta. But all that we want about, we know about the, 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 the WIMP miracle stays here, so we'll have the dark matter if this uh, cross-section, the annihilation across the thermal average cross-section is of the order of few times, uh, times to the minus 26 cube centimeter per, per, per second. Right, but here I want to, to focus on the first case, on the perturbative case when the mediator is heavy, and where we have all these conditions just by imposing the self-interactions, nothing else. So in this case, as I told you, the cross-section would be something like this, and these required masses of the order of uh, few uh, dozens of MEVs, and sizable couplings of the in, in gauge coupling in the, in the gauge sector, so in the in dark matter sector, and a very small portal, right? So in this case, dark matter, because it's very light, can self-annihilate into basically into electrons, because all our self and semi-annihilation channels are just kinematically closed. In this case, the self, the, the annihilation cross-section will scale like the Yukawa square times the, the gauge coupling square, so, well, yes, the gauge coupling square, times the mixing angle, basically. But so first this will be will be very suppressed because the Yukawa is basically uh, the electron is something like 10 to the minus 6 or so. We need this mixing angle to be very small, 10 to the minus 5 or so. So if it's not possible to have a, 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 cross, a, a thermal average cross-section of the order of few 10 to, 10 to the minus 26, which is what, what we want in order to, to produce the dark matter thermally. So this cross-section will be very suppressed just because it's proportional to the Yukawa and the mixing angle. So the dark matter will overclose the universe. So that means that dark matter cannot be a WIMP. Cannot be a WIMP because it's not possible to generate these thermal cross sections. One question, sorry, maybe I missed it, but why do you need the angles so small? Yes, because the, yeah, it's just because of the Higgs. So you can have the Higgs decaying, uh, so, so the, the width of Higgs into two dark matter. Right, this is this case like alpha mass of the Higgs over the mass of the A cube. So if, M, if the, the, the dark matter is at MeV scale, you have, okay, sorry, sine square theta. Yeah, yeah, it's because it takes this line. Right, yes, exactly. It, it, it's pure, pure uh, uh, Higgs physics. You don't want to, to violate this, this bounds on the visible decay of the Higgs, right. So we need another mechanism in order to generate the observed relic abundance. Now it's where the second SIMP, and SIMP standing for strong interactive massive particles, enters into the game, and we'll describe it. So, so imagine, so okay, so the Lee Weinberg is basically the, the WIMP miracle, so this, for, or, or the WIMP. So the WIMPs assume that we have a non-suppressed interaction between the standard mole and, and the, and, and the, and the, and the 
and the dark sector and the dark matter. But what if dark matter was completely sequestered from the standard model? So what if the dark sector is either completely or very feeble co uh, coupled to, to the visible sector, which is basically the, the case we do have here? So in this case, what happens for the production of dark matter? So we assume that dark matter, well, in this case, is the lightest state of the hidden sector, or at least the lightest massive state of the, of the hidden sector. Hidden sector, well, yeah. After the inflation, we, both the standard model and, and, the, and this dark sector, are, we can assume that they're heat to comparable temperatures, right? And then the point is that this, after the decaying of the inflat or something like this, uh, the two sectors will evolve exactly at the same, at the same rate because they will, they will be relativistic particles, so the, the, the cooling down the two sectors will be exactly the same. But so that, but that, that is assuming that they have the same particle content in, the, in both sectors, right? No way. Anyway. So how they, are they going to cool in the same, at the same rate? The okay, yes. Content? Yeah, okay. B b well, they cool exactly the same rate just because they, they are relativistic particles, and the temperatures evolve like one over the scale factor. You mean there will be some threshold? Yes, yes, of course, yes. Yeah. But, but all these thresholds will increase, the well, increase. Yes, if you, they will increase by a factor of a few. So it's just because it's the ratio of the, of the, the relativistic degrees of freedom uh, power one third, I think. So, yes, of course, there will be some kinks here if you want in the standard model, well, the two sectors, but they will modify just by a factor of, of a few. Right, yes. Now, when the mass, when the dark matter becomes, no, okay, that's for the relativistic case. When dark matter becomes non-relativistic, dark matter will tend to annihilate, but the annihilation into standard model, we say that they're very suppressed, and they cannot happen, and this reaction, two, two, two reactions, will basically not change the number density, because it just, after all, this is just a, a elastic scattering. So in this case, the first process that changes the number density in this kind of closed system is that three to two interactions. Right? And this has been studied last year by this, by this group. So what they assume is that we can have three dark matter particles annihilating to two dark matter particles. Right? The Boltzmann equation will be slightly, uh, will be uh, slightly different. We have here n cube basically because in the initial state we have three dark matter particles. And the final state we have n square because we have two dark matter particles. And this, well, n equilibrium, well, I can explain you why you have this. And so okay, the time is flowing in this direction. We are having an annihilation of three dark matter particles to two dark matter particles. And they point out that this mechanism works if dark matter lies in the MeV range, and if the interactions, if this uh, uh, coupling of the dark matter particles are of the order one. So there are strong interactions that what they call it SIMS. Strong is, of course, not related to the color, not related to the, uh, to, to the QCD. They just mean sizable interactions, so not weak, but Strong, but please don't, 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 don't associate this with, with, with QCD. Right, that's just one caveat, is that when you have these three to two annihilations, we are, you're pumping heat into the dark sector, basically because we're transforming the mass, the energy, raised energy, so mass, into kinetic energy. So we start with three cold particles, we are generating two hot particles. And this has been studied <coughs> in the early 90s, and here I show you a plot of the temperatures of the standard model and temperatures of the dark sector, if you want this as, as a function of the time, or as or in inverse, uh, as a function of the inverse of the temperature of the, of the standard model. So the standard model basically, uh, it's, it's cooling down, that's one over, over the scale factor. Uh, when it's relativistic, when, so the temperature is higher than the mass of the dark matter particle, they, they have exactly the same evolution as what I told you before. So b both the 3 to 2 and the 2 to 3 annihilation are in equilibrium. However, when dark matter be is, becomes non-relativistic, we can only have the annihilation, so it, the 3 to 2 annihilations. We're pumping heat, I told you, into the dark sector, so we're increasing the temperature of the dark matter. So within this period, between the, the period where dark matter is non-relativistic and the time of the freeze-out, dark matter is heating up. Its temperature is increasing. And of course, when the freeze out takes place, so with this x of order of t or something like of 20, uh, the dark matter starts cooling down very fast because, after all, it's non relativistic particles. It cooled down at 1 over the scale factor square. 
The point is that this is ruled out by structure formation. So we, we need to avoid this fast increase of the temperature to the dark matter particles with respect to the standard model. So it's basically it's ruled out basically is because dark matter will behave like hot dark matter. So we have exactly the same problem hot dark matter, like this free, free, streaming, free streaming length. So for the 3 to 2, so for the simp mechanisms to work, we have to avoid this fast increase on the temperature, on the dark matter temperature with respect to the, to the standard model. Of course, dark matter is not heating up. It's just that it's cooling down slower than, than the standard model. So it's... So, so, you, so you mean that the, by this process, uh, dark matter becomes hot? Hmm. Yes, I mean, it will be more, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. I, mean, I cannot explain you because basically I don't know exactly what are they. Because what they do is they compute the, um, um, yes, I mean, I'm true. The, the power spectrum, they compute the power spectrum, and they see that it is in contradiction with what is observed. Hmm. Now, how to prevent this relative increase of temperature? So, what, they, what these guys proposed last year is just to want to have kinetic equilibrium to these two sectors, and this, of course, it will work because kinetic equilibrium means that two temperatures will be exactly the same. So, if we, imp if we impose a kinetic equilibrium at least onto the epoch of the freeze out, will just for the two temperatures to be the same, so there will be no, no heat up. So is this possible? Yeah, because what we want to have is this the process, the, the one that guarantees the kinetic equilibrium, we want this process to be, uh, to be active, well, so this to be sizable, whereas this process, which is basically the WIMP, the annihilation to, to dark matter into two standard model particles, to be subdominant. And it's possible to have, because even if the two cross-sections, you can expect them to be exact, well, at least of the same order, just because they are relating by crossing symmetries. The pre-factor, so if you want the flux factor, will be different. Because here, is, uh, it depends on the number density of standard model particles, whereas here it will depend on the number density of dark matter particles. And at the time of the freeze-out, we have the Boltzmann suppression for dark matter particles, because they are non-relativistic. So this process could be much, much larger at the moment of the freeze out than, than this one. So we can have no two to two annihilations, but this two to two elastic scattering, right? Just because of the, uh, the because dark matter at the moment of the freeze out is non relativistic. Now what about what happened in the framework of the hidden vector dark matter? So we can have that these three to two annihilations. So, we, we, uh, so uh, here, for example, here I'm showing you this set of diagrams that contributes to the 3 to 2 annihilations, right? So they can have, there, there is again this mediation of the, of the scalars, but also we can have, I think the important thing here is that we have these triple interactions here that are, for example, in, in the usual case of the, I don't know, the train of dark matter, or if dark matter is protect the stability of dark matter is guaranteed by a Z2, so these kind of couplings of, with three dark matter particles is completely forbidden. So typically in, in say, in vanilla dark matter, you don't have this kind of process. Just because in, for having three to two, you have to have like a triple, like a triple, triple vertex. But in the hidden vector dark matter, you have, you, we, we, do, we do have them. So and in this case, we can compare the annihilation rate, so the two to two, the annihilation of dark matter, with respect to the three to two. So two to two means two dark matter annihilating the two standard model compared to the three to two. So three dark matter into two dark matter particles. And this is, could be very small. So the meaning that the three to two could dominate. Basically, exactly the same argument that I pointed out before. Because this will be proportional to the Yukawa of the electron, which is very small. The mixing angle that has to be very small. And uh, it's, we have this alpha, this is factor uh, order, order one. So the only thing that we are assuming here is that we have dark matter uh, which is uh, with a mediator which is heavy. So that's what we assume. And if we want this dark matter to, to, to explain the small scale uh, problems, we have by, by, by default, we have all this. And if we have this, we have the 3 to 2 that naturally dominates. So this simp, the dark matter will naturally a simp and not a wimp. 
right? Annihilating to this three to two. So that's why my title. So self interactions favor a uh, strongly interacting massive particle. So self interaction in this framework where the mediator is heavy naturally points towards three to two mechanisms, to three to two uh, production mechanisms for, for dark matter. Now what about what happened with the kinetic equilibrium here? Because I, I, I said before that it was a, a, a problem. So here is not possible by a, by a Higgs portal, basically because the mixing angle has to be very small. So if you want to have the kinetic equilibrium, so if you want the two temperatures to be exactly the same, at least at the, at, until the moment of the freeze out, uh, we have to have to introduce, say, new physics. So they, this dimension seven operator, dimension seven of, of, the, uh, of, of this um, shape. So uh, we'll have, we'll, uh, will be via um, the electrons. So uh, interaction of the dark matter with the, with the electrons. And this cannot be with the use of the exchange of the, of the Higgs, basically because of, of the Yukawa of the Higgs and the sm very small mixing angle. So this is a problem here. But of course, I mean, my idea here was not to, well, most to, to, to focus on the, on, the, on the big frame that basically the self-interactions naturally leads to uh, the C32 process. Okay, this is one problem, a particular problem of this particular model. However, this can be solved, of course. Uh, okay, first uh, let me show you what I have done till now. So this plot, so this thick, black, thick line, okay, I'm showing you here the mixing angle, the, sorry, the, the gauge coupling that we need as a function of the dark matter mass, and, uh, and this black line, black thick line, correspond to uh, the, um, the relic abundance. So all the points on this black thick line fulfill the relic abundance, right? These three lines, 10, 1.1 square centimeters per gram, correspond to the self-interactions. So we want to be somewhere bef between 1 and 0.1, so in this, in this region here. And this black region, okay, so this uh, hash region corresponds to the, the region which is um, in tension with the bullet cluster. And the blue region here corresponds uh, to the region where we're, we're, we could be, well, we're, the copying is bigger than 1, so this alpha, so it's a non-perturbative region. So we see that if you want to have dark matter relic abundance, we are either in the region with um, tension with the, with the bullet cluster, or in with this region where the coupling seems to be ha too big for doing a, a, a perturbative analysis. So here is basically the same information, but just in another plane. So sigma over, sigma over m, so the self-interaction as a function of the mass. And again, the message here is the same. Either, if we want to reproduce the correct relic abundance, we, we are either in tension with the uh, cl bullet cluster, or in tension with, or, or in the region where non-perturbative correction become, become sizable. But, well, this is not that surprising because after all what we have here is basically one, one free parameter because the others are all based uh, or um, um, fixed by, by the self-interactions. So that, this corresponds to the case where we assume this kinetic equilibrium between the two sectors. However, the, the question that we want to, to, to ask now is, is there are other ways to avoid this relative increase of temperature? Of course, the obvious one is to say that there are kinetic equilibrium, at least from the freeze out. So we, we, we uh, took these two temperatures to be exactly the same until, at least until this point. So there's no increase whatsoever. The temperatures are exactly the same. So there are basically three, three ideas. One, which is the, the one I, I told you before. So we have to keep kinetic equilibrium between the two sectors, at least until the moment of, of the freeze out. But that's not the only option. We can have uh, an extended dark sector with relativistic particles at the time of the freeze out. Having the relativistic particles in the dark sector is good for this could be. So we study this in, uh, in this model, um, in this paper. And what we had were um, Golston bosons. So we have these massless particles, and this is good for the for the for the temperature of the dark matter temperature, just because if we have dark matter particles and the entropy of the of the dark sector is is conserved, 
with the increase of the temperature of the dark sector will just be due to the change of the relativistic degrees of freedom. So this change of temperature will be just, uh, as you were pointing out, Sergio, just by a factor of a few. So we'll not have an increase of temperature of orders of magnitude, typically two orders of magnitude, but it'll be just a, co a, a factor of, of a few. So in this case, if we have an extended dark sector with relativistic particles, dark matter will, be, will, 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 will increase its temperature, but just a factor of, say, two, three, nothing. So not in tension with, with with the structure formation. The other option is that we have a dark matter, so the two sectors, a dark sector and a visible sector, always out of kinetic equilibrium, so something a la freezing. And I will say uh, in the, the minutes I have uh, something like this. So in this case, we will not assume that the, the, this, this mixing this, uh, between the two sectors, this copy between the sectors is not 10 to the minus 5, but rather will go to very small coupling. So 10 to the minus 10 or something like this, something a la freezing. So what we need here is that the dark, ma the, the, so I know how familiar you are with the freezing, so we can assume that the standard model is the one, oops, so sorry, here is the dark matter. So dark, standard model populates the dark matter, so populates the dark sector by a very tiny portal a la freezing, so couplings of, of this order. So the visible sector and the dark sector are always out of equilibrium. So the dark sector can thermalize, so meaning that we can have a, the concept of temperature will be defined uh, in, the, in the dark sector just because we have sizable couplings. But the dark matter temperature will always be very small with respect to the standard model sector. I will explain this in, in a, with, a, with a plot in the in next slide. And then what happened is that at the moment more when, when, when the temperature of the standard model is so TV or something like this, the two sectors will decouple completely. So first we have, okay, so first we have a very small coupling between the two sectors. We have very small energy transfer from the visible to the dark sector, a la freezing. The dark sector will thermalize. At some point, the two sectors will be completely coupled so that the two entropies will be separately conserved. And then when dark matter becomes non-relativistic, it will annihilate via these efficient three to two annihilations and it will be make a, a freeze out. So this scenario will be like a mix between freezing and, and freeze out. So here I'm showing you the evolution of the dark matter particle. So this is the, the yield, why basically the, the, the number density of dark matter particles normalize uh, with respect to the entropy, with, with its own entropy, as a function of, of the inverse of the temperature. So if you want to the time. So time is flowing from left to, to right. So in the first, uh, uh, um, moment of the evolution of the universe, we have that dark standard model is populating very slowly and very slowly because of these very tiny couplings, is populating very slowly the, the, the dark sector. So we, ha we have a very inefficient energy transfer from the visible to the dark sector. And at some point, uh, the transfer will stop just because this, pr this process will be uh, much smaller than the uh, Hubble expansion rate of the universe. So we'll have a, a plateau here corresponding to the case where the, the energy transfer is stopped, but the dark matter is relativistic. And then we have the Boltzmann suppression just uh, because of the uh, where dark matter becomes non-relativistic, and at some point dark matter will freeze out. So here is exactly the same plot, but just uh, zooming out. So this is the, the usual uh, equilibrium density, right? So dark matter is, so for, if you want, for the case of, of, of WIMP. So dark matter. It, this, this flat behavior just because dark matter is, is relativistic. And at some point, it becomes non-relativistic, and it falls down very fast with, because of this exponential suppression. So here, in the, in the usual WIMP scenario, you have that dark matter very fast reaches the equilibrium because the, 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 the couplings are very, very strong, right? Here, however, the couplings are very small. Dark matter is, is populating, but it never reaches the thermal the, the equilibrium, the equilibrium with the standard model. The two temperatures will never be the same. So that's why, and this difference of the temperature will be essential in, in the rest of the, of the, of the analysis. So, um, right, so first we have a population a la freeze in, and then we have an annihilation a la freeze out via this three to two process. And here we're showing you the behavior of the temperature, how the temp dark temperature behaves as a function of the inverse of the visible temperature. So the visible temper temperature basically behaves like one over, 
uh, 1 over t, just because of this plot. However, the dark se sector temperature, and this is the important point here, is always smaller than the visible sector, just because we have a very small coupling here between the two sectors. So dark matter temperature, uh, and they, it will increase at some point via because of this 3 to 2, but this difference of temperatures is, is the, key, the, key, mm, um, the, the key point here. And it's important because the, uh, the dark matter sector has a very small temperature with respect to the standard model. It's not, it, it's, it will be less populated than the standard model, and then we'll have, uh, it will be easier to annihilate it. So here I'm showing you basically the same plot that I showed you before. So the coupling of the dark matter, so the, the, the gauge coupling, as a function of the mass of the dark matter particles. So these three lines are exactly the same I showed you before. So these are the self-interactions. The thick black line is exactly the one I showed you before for the, the production of the relic abundance. And here I have two new lines, so these black uh, dotted lines that correspond to different ratios of the temperatures at the moment of the freeze out. Right? So if the temper temperature ratio of the dark and the visible sector is one, so it's exactly the case I showed you before. So the, the, wind, uh, the, the case when, when you have kinetic equilibrium, we, is the, 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 the figure I showed you before. But however, when we have different ratio of temperatures at the moment of the freeze out, we can have different couplings. Uh, we need different couplings in order to generate the relic abundance. And basically, this coupling has to be very small or they have to be smaller than the case where the temperatures are the same because the, the, the dark matter sector, the, the dark sector will be populated, uh, will be less populated, so we need less 3 to 2 interaction in order to fulfill, to, to generate the relic, the relic abundance. So that's the, the final point that I wanted to, to tell you. So one f way to avoid this, uh, this, this, increase of temperatures due to the 3 to 2 is to assume that the, the two sectors were never in equilibrium, so they were populated via the freezing, so the two temperatures are different. The dark sector temperature is uh, smaller than the, freeze, uh, than the visible sector temperature, and then we can have, in this case, smaller couplings, and then fulfill at the same time the relic abundance and the self-interaction. So this, if you want, this region is the one, the, the one what we know that we want. So in this region, we have, at the same time, the dark matter relic abundance and the self-interactions. So that was basically all that I want to tell you guys. So, so the, yes, my, like, my, like a summary. So the model I used was this hidden vector dark matter. I think it's very interesting. First, because vector dark matter is very often overlooked. Typically, you focus on, on, on scalar dark matter or in uh, fermion dark matter. A very important point, uh, well, feature of this scenario is that the dark matter stability is guaranteed by the gauge symmetry of, uh, of the problem. So we don't have to impose, to impose by hand a Z2 or Zn or R parity or whatever in order to, to guarantee the stability. It's a very simple model in the sense we have so a couple of new fields and four new free parameters and have a very rich phenomenology. So. I think I, try to, I, I hope I convince you that these small scale structures naturally leads, okay, this the, could be solved by these dark matter self interactions. And this self interaction naturally favors this 3 to 2 annihilation. So the yes, self interactions leads naturally to the simp, simp dark matter and not the FIMP, and, and not, sorry, the WIMP dark matter. So in this simple uh, scenario, so this strongly interacting massive particle, we have the dominant annihilation channel is the 3 to 2. So three dark matter particles annihilate into two dark matter particles. The only problem or the only caveat is that we have to avoid this dark matter reheating. Of course, reheating with respect to the standard mode. So there are basically three options in the market. One is to impose kinetic equilibrium, at least at the moment of the freeze out. Others have an uh, enlarged dark sector with relativistic particles, at least until the moment of the freeze out or to assume that dark matter and the standard model were never in kinetic equilibrium. So we have a, a population, a production of dark matter via uh, or a la freeze-in, and then an annihilation a la freeze-out via these three to two annihilations. And this same offer a new window to dark matter. In particular, it points toward different scales. And I think it's very interesting also in the, in the context of, of model building because we have very new challenges.
generally is that a statement that self interactions naturally favor three to two applications? It's very general. So, yeah. Um, well, it depends. So, basically, for having this self interaction, you can have either heavy mediator or light. If you have a light, a heavy ma a light mediator with the respect to standard model, you can you basically produce the self interaction via this resonant exchange of of like a summer friend enhancement. So in this case, uh, dark matter is wimp. So stop. However, if the mediator is kind of heavy, you have to have very light dark matter and very uh, and strong uh, sizable couplings. And then this naturally favors uh, seems. Yes. <coughs> Exactly, that would be a problem, right? Yes, so you would spoil the stability, the dark matter stability. If this the dark could be stable, so just ah, okay, yes. Yes, so in that, yes, in that case, the dark matter will be the, the dark fermions, the lightest fermions and not the ball. Well, yeah? Maybe that, in that uh, scenario, it's not a problem, right? Because if the, if the, if the, uh, the, the dark matter particle here has a, a few tensions, then maybe, and you have fermions even lighter, then maybe the final uh, stable particle is a, is a hot uh, particle. I have no idea what you're talking about. No, what I'm saying is that, uh, that, uh, that if, if that is the case, if, uh, maybe you, I don't know, maybe you have maybe you the to, mass of the... the you want the to have self Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Probably the yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but why do I just tend the, the model? <laughs> Thank you.